Okay, Beakley, go ahead. Now? Yeah, don't, don't be scared. Beakley, not scared. <clears throat> tell her, well, her, I tell ya. Hungry likes to tell ya. Ravi Oli, Beakley, so young. Gobble down the spoon and onion ring to Super Mario. Knock in my room. Stand a monster makes scared. Beakley lose his hair. Been killing good with only a wing. But for moving tonight, it has a transvestite. But Beakley wants different things. Thank Taco, taco. Taco, taco, more, more taco, 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 full of dodges, taco, I'm getting it, man. Jeez. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm Derek, and welcome to Bad Movie Friday Night. Tonight, y'all, we have such a treat for you. This movie has the longest running theatrical run in the world. This movie basically defined the cult following as we know it today. This movie has connected fans from all over the world, and it's amazing to think considering that the budget is so shoestring and the distribution company actually pulled it from its original release because of low ticket sales. Yes, if you weren't listening to Beakley's awesome opening number, we're watching the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The Rocky Horror Picture Show, or Rocky Horror, started off life as the brainchild of actor Richard O'Brien. In 1973, O'Brien was living in London and was an unemployed actor. During his downtime, he spent his time sketching the script for a show which lovingly poked fun at the tropes of old science fiction and horror films, Steve Reeves' muscle movies, and rounded it all off with rock and roll music. He showed the script to Australian director Jim Sharman, whom he worked with before, and together they brought the story together and onto the stage. Within a year, the musical made its way to America, premiering in Los Angeles and soon moving to New York. Pretty soon, talks were in process to turn the cult favorite play into a film, and in 1975, the film was adapted, shot, and distributed to eight cities across America, and was almost immediately pulled due to underwhelming sales. Thankfully, an executive at Fox noticed campy classics were selling well at Friday midnight screenings, and prompted theaters to only show the movie at that time. Soon, it spread like wildfire, becoming the phenomenon of camp, costume, and shadow plays that it is today. And I didn't lie before. Fox has never recalled this in its 42-year run, making this the world's longest continually running film. This movie is almost like a religion, with people pantomiming it in front of the screen while people yell at them, almost like a congregation. My family plays it every New Year's Eve so that we can do the time warp at midnight. 
This is legitimately one of my favorite films, and has been for years. So we're going to watch it today. And since this movie is tongue-in-cheek, I'm being a little cheeky with what we're making today. Cheesy Chorizo Taquitos. Get it? Tacos stuffed with sausage? Oh, I'm so naughty. So what I've been doing right now is sweating about four cloves of garlic and half an onion. And to that, I'm going to add a pound of ground chorizo and cook it until it browns. So let's get started. Long ago in a galaxy far, far away, the Lord said, let there be lips. And there was, and it was good. I love this opening number, not just because it's awesome, but because it's clever as all get out. So the lips on screen are obviously female. However, the voice is obviously male. Where we stand and Flash Gordon was there. It's a high register, but it's very much male. The scene is covertly setting up the mood for the film and its gender bending themes. It's so subtle and yet so blatant once you notice it. God, I love it. Well, after that, we get to a church where we meet Brad Majors, played by Barry Bostwick, and Janet Weiss, played by Susan Sarandon. They're at their best friend's wedding, and afterwards, Brad proposes to Janet, and together they head to see their old friend, Dr. Everett Scott. And how do we know? Because we meet a criminologist. I would like... You would? Take, uh, if I may... You may... To take you... Where? On a strange journey. How strange was it? <laughs> Sorry, I got caught up in the moment. At least I didn't ask him where his neck went. Okay, so while that was going on, I finished grating a pound and a half of cheese. I used pepper jack, but any soft melting cheese will do. And I set my oven to 425. So, Brad and Janet head off in the rain to and get a flat tire. So, they head off to go to a castle they passed along the way, because there's nothing out of the ordinary about a castle being in the middle of America. And, of course, they sing about it. <laughs> Beakly wet. And then they ring the bell and meet the butler Riff Raff, which leads to the catchiest song in the movie that you can play at family Halloween parties. After a great active scene, the movie decides to take a rest, and Brad decides to show how square he really is. Do any of you guys know how to Madison? Shut up, Brad. You'll never be cool. So let's start working on these tacos. In this pan, I've got about two tablespoons of oil and I'm just warming through the corn tortillas, about 30 seconds on each side, just until they're supple. Okay, are you ready for the best entrance ever given by a drag queen in cinema? How'd you do, I? Yes, we meet Dr. Frankenfurter, a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania, played by the great Tim Curry, who invites Brad and Janet up to the lab. Once up there, Frank explains he's found the secret of life. I love how melodramatic this whole scene is. It's just over the top enough to be camp, but also cinematically interesting. With Tim Curry giving 110%, the synthesizer vamp, the lighting, the coloring, it's great. And now we get Rocky, who sings a random song. The sword of Damocles is hanging over my head. <sighs> now don't get me wrong, it's a good song. But we later learned that Rocky can't talk. Apparently, all he can do is grunt and sing random songs. So let's roll these tacos. What you're going to do is get a helping spoonful of the chorizo and put it on one third of the taco. Then you're going to cover that with some cheese and then Roll it up tight with the seam at the bottom. Then we're just going to put these in the oven and we're going to cook them for about 10 minutes just until they're crisp. Now Frank sings a song 
And then we get Meatloaf playing Eddie, singing one of the best songs in the movie. Seriously, this song can stand by itself as a single. Then, Frank kills Eddie, reprises I Can Make You a Man, and takes Rocky to bed. And I mean in the biblical way. So while they all take a nap, let's make some sauces for dipping. The first is going to be a pepper jack cheese sauce. So in this pan, I've just made a roux. That's a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of flour mixed together. To that, I'm going to add about a quarter of a cup to half a cup of cream. After that's all mixed together and starts to thicken, we're going to add a little bit at a time some pepper jack cheese. Add in about a handful each time, and then when it melts thoroughly, you add in the next. When it's nice and soft and gooey, that's when you know it's done. Now, Brad and Janet are taken to their separate rooms and receive a visit from their host. At the same time, Riff Raff and Magenta go and torture Rocky for the sheer fun of it, and Rocky runs off. After Janet's night with Frank, she's feeling all in a tizzy and starts a soliloquy about how she wishes they never came to the castle. A bit late to second guess yourself, Janet. You've made your bed and Frank's muster sheets. So she sees Brad has also slept with Frank, which, you know, she could take as an experience to grow closer to Brad, but instead she pouts, finds Rocky, and gets a naughty thought. Touch it, touch it, touch it, touch me. I wanna be dirty. Wow, virgin to promiscuous in less than 30 minutes? We have a new record. So let's make some guacamole. I did make this in a previous episode, but I'm gonna show you actually how to core an avocado. What you do is you take a very sharp knife, just cut it in half, Remove the halves, then with a, with a strong knife and a lot of resolve, tap the stone, turn it, and it comes out. Now be very careful when you do this or you will cut yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to fish out all this meat into a bowl with some lime juice so it doesn't turn brown, and then mush it to our consistency. I like mine a little bit mushy. Now, Frank is upset with Riff Raff about Rocky, and tells him to find Rocky on the monitor. Riff Raff instead finds Dr. Everett Scott, and Frank believes he's here to investigate the castle for UFO activity. Turns out, Dr. Scott is looking for his nephew, Eddie. They also find Janet and Rocky in the vat, which leads to... Janet! Dr. Scott! Janet! Ah! Rocky! I love that scene. It makes me laugh every time I see it. Magenta comes in and announces dinner is prepared, which is odd since they just had a party and everyone had turned in. But truthfully, if that's the only problem with the pacing of this, I'm fine with that. So, the dinner is tense and Dr. Scott sings about Eddie, which leads to the uncovering of Eddie and the insinuation being that they've eaten him. And Frank starts singing to Janet about how she's not all that and turns everybody into stone. And I mean everyone, including Columbia and Rocky. Then he announces a floor show. Ooh, things are getting saucy, so let's finish our sauces. So, to the avocado, like I said earlier, I added some lime juice. And to that, I'm going to add about half a tomato. And then some pepper some salt, and some onion powder. Then I'm just going to mix this all up and keep it cool until it's ready to serve. Now it turns out Frank is making everyone perform in a burlesque show for no one's amusement in particular, and this number is one of my personal favorites. But at the end, Riff Raff comes in and says the mission is a failure and they're returning to Transylvania. And by they, he means Magenta and himself. So Frank dies, Columbia dies, Rocky dies, and Riff Raff lets the humans escape. And this next number they do, Superheroes, has a very interesting history.
My roommate is a ham. I've done a lot. God knows I've tried. Originally, this song was cut from the U.S. distribution of the film. Only recently have fan clubs and shadow shows been able to find the original U.K. release of the film and bring it to the States. I personally think it was cut from the U.S. release because of the dark lyrics. The song is all about defeat, but truthfully, it makes sense in the scope of the film. You see, the story is all about two people who start off as morally upright citizens of the community, who meet a group of oddballs, who teach them new forms of expression and pleasure, and once they're gone, they feel desired defeated and not certain where they fit in society anymore. So, although most newcomers to the film have probably seen this number now, imagine what a shock it was to us who grew up to the US cut, only to find there's a whole other number we've never seen before. It was awesome. It made the film feel more well-rounded, and the dark images actually bookend the film very well. And the movie's done, and so are the taquitos. So we're just going to put them on a platter with a helping of each of our sauces and just let everybody pick and choose. So, final thoughts on the film. It's safe to assume I love this movie. It's campy, it flows well, the story is fun, the visuals are striking and memorable, the music is solid and anthemic, and shows off the range of the actors well, and the overall moral of the movie stands up even today. It's okay to indulge in pleasure, as long as you don't go overboard, or a man wearing tights will kill you. Okay, I'm not too sure about the last half of that moral, but the first half is really sound. Now, is it low budget? Obviously. The film is grainy, and it is shot in an exploitive manner. But all in all, the makers of this film use their low budget to their advantage, and truthfully, everything else is so great, you can forgive the quality of the film. I hold the firm belief you're not an adult until you've seen this film once, and I stand by that statement. This film has become such a part of the fabric of popular culture, it's difficult to find one person who, even if they've never seen the film, wouldn't get a reference to the time warp or, oh, Rocky. This is a great film for a viewing party, either at home or you can seek out your local shadow play and go support them. My local one, Lips Down on Dixie, have been around for over 15 years, and they continuously put on a wonderful midnight experience. So, whether you stay in or you go out, grab a group of friends and enjoy this cultural phenomenon. Well, thanks for stopping by, thanks for tuning in, and come back next week when January Jingles continues. Beakley, tacos are ready! Taco! Taco! Taco dance! Taco dance! Taco! Taco! Taco dance! Taco dance! Taco! Taco! Bye, y'all. Bye-bye, taco!